In this video, we will be giving our targets some health and allowing us to set the value of them so that way we can shoot them more than one time and actually have differing values based on the target. We're also going to give a bonus to the score once we destroy the target now that they will have possibly more than one health point. So let's get started. Since we're going to be working with our targets, well, why don't we actually open up the targets so we can work on them. So let's pull open our target blueprint and get started. So inside of here we have our handle update score. Since we're going to be giving these thing health, these targets health, and we're going to give them score values, let's go and create two new variables. We're going to create the variable target value, or you could create this target score, whatever you want. It's your name. And we're going to create another one called health value. Now I try to keep these as descriptive as possible just to make them easier. But you can keep them as generic as you want. It's your project. So since we have a value here, when we pass it along, let's go ahead and just plug it in. And now whatever we have set to the target value will be passed along. Let's set our default to, let's say, 50. Why not? Now anytime we hit this target, before we destroy it, we're going to go ahead and give them our target value, which is 50. If we run this, we should see 50, 100, and 150. Now, let's go ahead and actually make it a v variable value. If we click on the little eyeball here, we're going to go ahead and make it public. We'll do it for the health value as well, but you can do that over here under editable. What that does is make it public, public and any version of this blueprint will have it editable inside of its settings. Now the reason we want to do this is inside of here we have one value. It's 50. But let's say we wanted to make custom versions of it or we want to make maybe one or two specific. By setting it as public, I can actually go in here and set this to 100. And when we run it, you'll notice the right one is 50, middle is 50, but the left one now gives me 100 points. And I didn't have to set up anything different inside of my blueprint itself because I've exposed it as a public variable. You can do the same thing with the health value. Let me set my health value default to 1 and we'll go ahead and compile and save. Now one thing you might notice is I do compile and save a lot. The more often you do it, for the most part, if your computer is fast enough, it leads to less errors because you're going to catch them sooner. This also brings up a good point. If you haven't been doing it between each video or recently, Make sure you go back to your main map and do a save all so you can make sure everything's correctly saved. Now, you may wonder why these are yellow. These are yellow because you're missing a tooltip. Once you make these public and they are out here, people can see values. In order to encourage you to properly finish setting them up, you're supposed to fill in a tooltip. So, this is the score value spelled properly. Now it's going to go green. Go ahead and look at my map here. And I move my mouse over the target value. You're going to see 100 and health value 1. I need to compile and save. Now if we look at them again, you see this is score value and you see health value. So they're handy to fill in for if your level designers or environment artists or anyone else using your stuff needs to actually know what you're doing behind the scenes in the blueprints. So now that we've got set up, let's go ahead and do the next part. We need to update the target to take damage. Well, we've gone ahead and set in a health value, but we need to actually make sure we use it. So let's put in before the destroy actor. We're going to do this pretty simply. We don't want to destroy it unless the life is actually less than or equal to zero. So let's get our health value. And then we'll do less than or equal to zero. And we're going to go ahead and attach that to an if. Now you may be asking, why are we doing less than or equal to zero? Why not when it gets to zero, we go ahead and kill it? Well, let's say we did an equals zero. And let's say we later on added in a weapon that does extra damage. Let's say it does five damage. If your target only has one life and you do five damage to it, you're now going to be negative four that's not going to be equal to zero, and this will never fire. So that's always one thing to think about. 
for the most part, if you want something to die when it gets to zero, try to make sure you do a less than or equal zero to make sure it's safe. So let's go ahead and run this and hit play and see what happens. Now nothing should be different. Everything should still be dying properly. Well, it's not. And why is that? Well, even though we have it set to less than or equal zero, we're kind of not actually doing any damage. We haven't actually done anything with our damage value that's coming in. So let's go ahead and move this over. And now we're going to start running to an issue. If I want this damage value, I'm going to have to drag this around and set it up somewhere else. What we're going to do is we're basically going to move these over. And we're going to promote our hitter and damage value to variables and set them on the beginning so that way they are easily organized and we can reuse them later. So I'm just going to quickly do this, reorganize this, rename these appropriately. So this is going to be our hitter and this is going to be our, whoops, let's actually rename it over here. This is going to be our damage value and we've gone ahead and set these up. Now, if you noticed, we named these the same because this is part of the event. It's an incoming input of the event. It's not an actual variable inside of our graph, and we can go ahead and rename them. And it's something you might want to do just so that way you know it what it is. Obviously, this is our hitter, and this is our damage value. Let's go ahead and rehook this back up, move this back over here, and now we can take our hitter, plug it into our update score, and now we're back to how we were before. The difference being here, now I can take my damage value. I can take and move these over a little bit like that. And I can take my damage value and get it. And then we're going to do a minus. And we're going to minus it from our health. Well, now we have a problem. We don't actually know how much health this person had when they started. And we don't want to continually adjust it or we're going to run into an issue. If we were to, for example, to take, unhook this and take our health value here and do this, then we're going to take our health value minus one and get our damage value. And then we're going to go ahead and set our health value like so. And this is going to go ahead and let us know what our current health value is. But if we want to know where it was in regards to the starting health value, we're going to need to set that somewhere. And the nice thing is you already know what the starting health value is. It's going to be this value right here, the default when it starts. So let's actually set that up. So since we have nothing in here, let's make a begin play. This is something that's always nice to do in order to basically you're initializing your default values or you're setting reference values. Let's create a new variable and we'll call this starting health value because technically the health value here is our current health value. We're going to set our starting health value to the health value. So what this is going to do is when this event is when this target is created, First thing it's going to do is take the health value and set it as the starting health value. Now, as long as we don't change our starting health value, it's never going to differ and we're always going to know what our starting health value is. So now that we have this set up and we run through it again, hopefully we have a working, there we go. And things are destroyed and points are given to us. Now to test this, let's go ahead and make our 100.1. Let's give it two points of life. Run it and try to move properly. If I can hit the play button, there we go. We destroy it, we destroy it, we shoot at it, we get 100 points, we shoot at it, we get 100 more points. So there we go. Now we have our health values working properly. We don't have a bonus value set up yet. We're gonna do that in a second, but we have it set up now where a target value is passed along that's set per object. A health value is stored and then checked every time it's fired at. And only if it gets to zero or below will it go ahead and destroy it. Otherwise, it will do nothing. That's what this is right here. 
Basically, if our health value is not less than or equal to zero, we're going to go ahead and do nothing. Else, we're going to go ahead and destroy our actor. So, one of the keys here is we want to add in a bonus. Since we've gone ahead and we have set up everything in terms of functions, this is really simple. Let's just go ahead and copy this. And this is when we destroy it. Let's go ahead and give a bonus when right before we destroy. We'll do it something like this. And there we go. Now we're going to go ahead and give another target value to there. Eh, you know what? Let's go ahead and add a bonus value. Why not? Maybe we want some of these to be really hard because they're going to be stronger. We don't actually want it to be the target value. So we'll call it bonus value. We'll expose it. We'll go ahead and delete. We'll drag the bonus value in over here. We'll clean this up. Let's go ahead and give a bonus value of 100 because why not? And we'll go ahead and play it again. Now when we run, we should get 150. 50 for shooting it, 100 for bonus, 150, 100 for hitting it once, 200, 100 for hitting it once, and 100 for the bonus value. And there you go. And the nice thing is, you want another target, you can always just drag in another one here. It's going to have the default values. You can adjust it as needed. Let's say, let's say we'll make this one really strong. Five points of health, 50 for the target value, 100 for the bonus value. We'll go ahead and play it, and we'll start shooting it, and you notice our score goes up by 50 every time, and then 200 once we destroy it. And everything is independent of each other. So that is going to be how we've added in the damage value, as well as the health value and the target value. Now you will notice something in here. Throughout all of this, we really needed to, did not need to do anything in regards to the damage value itself. And why is that? Well, in our last video, inside of our character, right here, we passed along a damage value of 1. We already thought ahead about what we wanted to do, and we've set up the damage value to automatically pass along, and we already set it up when we were working on setting up the previous video. One thing you might want to do, keep in mind, as this is a variable, let's go ahead and drag off and promote to variable. Let's name this the damage value. And we'll set it as a public variable. One reason we can do this is now that we have it a variable, maybe we have a bonus where the player does double damage every so often. Or maybe you want to set it up where... If they right-clicked, we went ahead and did two times the damage or any other thing. Now that we've exposed this as a variable, we can easily change it in other methods, other functions, other events, and we can adjust the damage on the fly. And since everything's done through interfaces, it's really easy to pass it along. That's going to wrap up this video. In the next one, we're going to make the targets a little more interesting when we fire at them, and we're going to make them change colors based on their health.